Hello everyone, welcome back to Let's Play The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. In this episode, I want to start off by going back to the, actually, like I said in the last episode, I don't think I ever showed you guys where the Grey Fairy for Snowhead, or the Snowhead area is, so we need to go ahead and do that really quick. I also want to kind of apologize, because I really try to get at least an episode out every other day, but the past couple of days that has not really been possible. Actually, probably would have been possible, but I got really sidetracked by... SGDQ, and if you don't know what SGDQ is, I really, you know, would urge you guys to go check it out. I'll put a link to the channel in the description. It's almost over at this point, so it's kind of a, a moot point at this point, I guess you could say. But it is a collection of speedrunners that, you know, speedrun a bunch of games over a course of like four or five days or something like that for charity. So I got really wrapped up in watching that. But anyway, here we are in the Fairy Fountain. It was actually really close to the entrance to the Snowhead Temple, so let's go ahead, since we do have all of the 15 fairies, and see what she has to say. And that enhanced magic power kind of manifests itself in that now we have twice as much magic power, which will definitely come in handy later on. Come see me whenever you are overcome by weariness. So that was a nice, succinct way of getting us more magic. I love the extended magic meter in this game because you don't have to worry about, you know, because you've got to use stuff like fire arrows and light arrows and stuff like that. It seems like a lot more often than you did have to in Ocarina of Time. Maybe that's just me. Maybe that's just my, you know, own perception. It could be wrong. But I feel like the extended magic meter works a lot better in Majora's Mask because of the... It seems like you have to use magic a lot more often. But I'm going to go ahead and return back to the Mountain Village area. There is probably... There's like one more thing that I need to do here, and that is get my Powder Keg certification. Now, the Powder Keg is an item that we have not discussed at all. I don't believe I think I've even mentioned it whatsoever. And by the way, when I reset time, we're going to be coming pretty much right back to the smithy and getting our sword upgraded. And that's going to be kind of a big ordeal that we will have to worry about in the next cycle. But before we go back to the mountain village, there is a, an area over here. If we come in here, this was, by the way, the reason we could not come in here before was because it was covered by snow. And when the springtime came, when we defeated Goat, I love how there's like a billion. I forgot these things were even going to be here. But when we defeated Goat and Spring was returned to, I was going to say Termina, but really it was only the Snowhead area, the snow kind of melted out in front of that passageway a little bit, and we can get back up here to the top, where Darmani, Darmani's grave is, I should say, without having to climb up that huge ladder. So that's a really good thing. I would really hate to have to climb up that every single time. And I have to imagine going back down is probably a lot easier than going up. And that looks like a grotto if I wasn't, you know, just seeing things. That looks like a grotto back there. I don't think there's, uh, there's nothing really important in there. It might be like some rupees or something like that, but I know it's not a heart piece or, you know, an upgrade or anything like that. So I'm not really going to worry about getting that. But speaking of getting springtime back to, you know, Snowhead, this area is now a big, you know, water-filled area. It's pretty nice, actually. I love, I knew that was going to happen. I love how right before the Snowhead area, you know, the Goron Village, there is an area like this where the Gorons are going to have to go through pretty much constantly that is full of water, which is like a death trap to the Gorons. But the reason we need to go back to the Goron Village is that, like I said, we need to get our Powder Keg certification, and we don't really need to mess with Tingle right now. Didn't mean to hit that. My finger slipped to hit the button on the controller. But yeah, the Powder Keg certification. Are you kidding me? I, Well, I guess I'm not dead right now. I, I really doubt I'm going to be able to get back up this. And I guess, I don't even know what that was, but it kind of saved me right there. I think that was a, not even a glitch, just a pure stroke of luck anyway. But anyway, for the thousandth time, the powder keg is a big bomb pretty much, but we can't just use it without having our certification. And the way we get that is by coming over here into this little area right here. And for some reason, the Goron cannot jump into this area. And by the way, I don't know if I mentioned this, the Goron cannot really grab on the ledges. So that is one of the detriments of being a Goron in this game. But we have to come down here as a Goron 
and talk to this guy right here, which I believe that this guy in Ocarina of Time, he was in the Goron Village, of course. I think what he did in Ocarina of Time was fashion the Giant's Knife, which was like the Bigoron Sword, but it wasn't the Bigoron Sword because it would break after a certain amount of time. But let's go ahead and talk to him. I'm the Goron who sells the Powder Keg, the most famous product of the Gorons. Want a powder keg? Powder kegs explode with powerful blasts and are very dangerous. Until I have tested you to see if you can use them properly, I can't let you use any on your own. Will you give it a try? Of course I will. If you can destroy the boulder that blocks the entrance to the Goron racetrack near here, using the powder keg I'm about to give you, then I'll approve you to carry them. When the powder keg begins ticking faster, it means that it's about to explode. Try to blow up the boulder blocking the Grand Racetrack entrance without the powder keg exploding on the way. There's a sign near the racetrack, so keep an eye out for it. When you finish, come see me. So we've got to take this lit live bomb all the way back to the Goron Racetrack. And as far as I can remember, this is the only powder keg in the game that we're going to be using like this. We're going to be able to use powder kegs later on just kind of like regular bombs, but you can only carry one at a time. When you use them later on, the fuse isn't quite so long, but the fuse right here is long enough for us to get back to the Goron Racetrack area, which I'm not sure if I showed you guys where that is, but I will meet you guys over there because it's kind of a long walk, especially since we actually do have to walk and we can't roll back over there. And here we are right in front of the Goron Racetrack. We can just go ahead and put down the powder keg right there. We could wait for it to explode. Or what I like to do is take out an arrow and shoot it because that will automatically make it explode. And this guy right here, of course, the Goron Elder Son, apparently he was waiting for that to happen so he could go watch the races. Which doesn't really make much sense because the Gorons are already in there. So that means that there were Gorons trapped in the racetrack all winter long. So if we go in here, there are going to be Gorons just waiting there, waiting for us to race them. So yeah, like I said, these guys must have been waiting here all summer long or all winter long for us to break them out. Anyway, we don't really want to do the race right now. We could because it basically if you win the race, it will give you a bottle full of gold dust, which we do want the gold dust, but not right now because that's what we're going to use to upgrade our sword later on in the next cycle and as i think i explained in like the first or second episode when you go back in time anything in your bottles it get, goes away pretty much so if we got the gold dust right now we would still have to go back and get it when we turn back time also it would probably be a good idea to get it now because we would just have a bottle you know on hand another bottle anyway and that gold dust even though like i said you can use it to upgrade your sword later on you can actually sell it to the curiosity shop in west clocktown for like 200 rupees or something like that but it's not really worth it to me i don't think i'm not gonna waste that much time trying to win the race which is actually pretty hard just to win that gold dust but here we are in the treasure chest shop in east clocktown we need to go ahead and speaking of hard things do this mini game right here i believe that this mini game basically costs a different amount of rupees for every form of link that you are so for the goron it is 30 rupees and not only that it has a different like reward basically for beating this mini game as every different form of link and the reward you get for beating it as a goron is actually a heart piece so that's why we want to do this now nintendo power actually not nintendo power the player's guide for majora's mask gave me this idea of z targeting like this and this kind of makes you know the grid a little bit easier to navigate because you can keep it straight in front of you. And I love how I'm pretty sure I went in the wrong direction just to start off. This mini game is basically, they give you so much time, or you know, just enough time, you can only mess up like one time. And since the path, of course, is pretty much random every time, it's not like you can just memorize the path and then try again next time. So I guess I got myself stuck in here again. Actually, I don't remember going this way the first time, and I guess it worked that time. I could have sworn that I got blocked off when I went that way. I thought it kind of funneled me back into the same area again. Anyway, I'm not complaining. We got that piece of heart. I thought that was actually going to take quite a few more times to get that, but I guess not. Now, we do not want to try again. We want to save some rupees because we are going to need 100 rupees to get a heart piece in just a few minutes. But speaking of 100 rupees, and I love that, how that is exactly the number that I was looking for, if we come over here and go back here, we, of course, I'm gonna need to equip some bombs, but there is a an area back here that you can get a silver rupee. So let me go ahead and equip some bombs. Of course, we don't wanna be in our Goron form because they cannot swim. 
we went that way the first time we came through here. If we go to the left, we have to watch out for the Skulltola that's going to drop down there. But if we come all the way back here, there is a cracked wall right here. So if we drop a bomb right in front of it, we will be able to, of course, you know, blow open the cracked wall or whatever. And back there is a treasure chest. So this is like, what, the second or third treasure chest we've gotten to open in this episode. Here we get a silver rupee. So that is an easy way of getting a, you know, cool 100 rupees if you're low on rupees. Especially, like, I kind of thought, like I said, that that minigame was going to take more than, you know, a couple of tries. So if I had dropped below 30 rupees, I probably would have come back here, got that silver rupee, and went back and tried the minigame again. But I did get lucky and got the minigame right on the first try. Now, that is not even the only reason that I came back down here. And I can't believe I didn't do this the first time I came here. I didn't mean to put that on again. But the first time I came here, I should have looked through the telescope and basically triggered another event that I did not trigger the first time I came here. But now that I'm thinking about it, it wouldn't really make it matter too much because the first time we came here, we were at Deku. So, like I said, it wouldn't matter too much because we wouldn't have been able to go get the thing that I'm about to show you. Now, I might as well go ahead and get you know, those rupees. Of course, we're almost full of rupees. I can't wait to get the adult wall the giant wallet, I should say, because that allows you to carry 500 rupees. And it seems like we're almost constantly full of rupees. Anyway, before I show you what I wanted to show you, the basically the reason we came here, I found this sort of glitch. I'm not sure if I even found it or not, technically. I found it on my own volition. You know, other people could have found it themselves. If you target this thing and then you check it, you'll fall through the floor. I'm not sure if that has any implications for any other sort of glitches. I just thought that was kind of cool. But we've already talked to this old man here before. We need to gaze into the telescope because, like I said, we need to trigger that other thing. I don't want to look up there because the Skull Kid is up there still, and we could trigger that again. What we want to do is look over here because a Deku scrub, or a business scrub, I guess, will fly out of where... I'm not even sure where he came from, but he will fly up, and you have to watch him. I'm not sure, speaking of watching him, if you actually do have to watch him or not, or if you can just go, since I know where he's going to go, I'm not sure if you have to watch him go in there or not. I think you do, and, you know, just to be safe, I'll watch him go. The hard part is, like, the telescope is so zoomed in, you can't actually watch him the whole way. But he's going to go into this grotto right here, so if you want to be safe and just watch him go in there, I would position the camera right there. And since I lost him, and by the way, we're going to be talking to that guy pretty soon as well. Since I lost him, I might as well just go ahead and situate the camera pretty much right where he's going to go, and he will go right in. So we need to go to that grotto right there, but not only that grotto, there are a lot of grottos. That kind of rhymed a little bit, but we need to go get a lot of grottos, and that is just one of them. There are like six grottos that we're going to need to go in before the end of this episode, so I think that I will meet you guys out there, because I'm going to go have to go, you know, through this entire passageway again. I will meet you guys at that grotto that the Deku Scrub just went in. Alright guys, here is that grotto that the guy was just, or you know, the Deku Scrub just went in. One thing I want to do before I go in there though, is I want to get into my spike form. I'm not even sure if you technically have to be in your spike form or not. But if we run into this tree, we will knock the guy out of the tree. Apparently he like broke his leg or something like that. If we talk to him, he'll say that he stole those rupees from a crow, don't go stealing them. That guy is like the guy from the curiosity shop, and that is one of the reasons I said he was such a shady guy at the beginning of the let's play because he's like trying to steal these rupees out of these trees and stuff like that this guy i've no or always i've never liked this guy i don't know why i guess you're not supposed to like him since he is such a shady character but speaking of shady characters we're gonna i guess play ring around the rosy with the grotto there i don't know how i was not falling into it right there but back here there is that deku scrub that we saw come in here now you got to be kind of careful because like i said he is a shady character he's gonna say that this is of course the secret storage unit but he will sell us a piece of heart if we keep the place secret. 150 rupees sounds like a little bit much to me, so we're going to say no. And in that case, he's going to sell it to us for 100 rupees. So if you want to spend 50 extra rupees, uh, you can do that if you want. But I guess there's not really much point in doing that because you can knock the price down to 100 rupees. If you say no there, I'm not even sure what happens, but the price never goes lower than 100 rupees. So that's kind of unfortunate because we could, you know, give up a spot anytime. He should go lower than that. But one thing I never liked about this grotto, I guess you could say, is that, and it's not even really that big of a deal, but he takes forever to go back out of the hole, and you gotta watch him go the entire way. Now, there are, like I said, like six grottos that we're gonna have to go in, and the next one is actually right here, and this is how you're gonna get yet another heart piece. Down here, there is a collection of four 
I never remember what these things are called. They're not mass or stones of truth. They're gossip stones. There we go. There are four grottos situation, situation, situated around Terminal Field in this configuration. And we're going to have to go in all of them and play a song. Now, the song that you have to play, there are four different songs, I believe, that you can play. Of course, there are four different gossip stones. I always thought you had to play one, each song, one time to each of the four grottos, or one in each grotto. The thing is, you actually only have to have one of the songs unlocked, and the two songs that we have that will work for this are the Sonata of Awakening and the Goron Lullaby. So we have to play one of these two songs in each of the grottos, but not only that, you have to be the form that you learned it in, basically. So since we learned, or since basically we're in the Goron form right now, if we play the Sonata, or the Goron Lullaby, I guess I'm just gonna fail at first. I, you know what? I'm pretty sure I'm doing it right. There we go. Sometimes, I don't know, the Goron drum set just doesn't seem like it wants to work. Anyway, since we are in the Goron form, we can play the Goron Lullaby. And what that'll do is apparently not work at all. You know what? I guess uh, maybe it's because I punched in that, you know, Gossip Stone or whatever and didn't work. That's the gist of what you're gonna have to do. You have to be a Goron and play the Goron Lullaby, or you have to be a Deku and play the Sonata of Awakening to each of the four statues around Terminal Field, or each of the four stones. So I'm not really sure why it didn't work that time. Maybe I just wasn't close enough, or like I said, maybe when I punched in that stone, that had something to do with it, but hopefully this will work this time. And there we go. I was getting kind of worried there for a second. I was, I don't think I've ever had it happen where I played the song and it didn't work. But anyway, like I said, when I first played the game, I thought you had to play one of the, or each of the four area songs, basically, like Sonata of Awakening, there, the New Wave Boss Nova, which we're gonna le learn later on, the Goron Lullaby, and then the fourth one. I thought you had to play each of those four songs, but that is not the case. Now, there were two grottos over there that we had to go into, and there are also two grottos over here that we're gonna have to do near the north area of town, and the first one that we're gonna go into is the same exact thing. Which just kind of makes a little bit more sense because, you know, we're playing the Goron Lullaby right in front of the Snowy Mountains or whatever. I wish they had made it so you had to play, like, the area's song because there is one of the openings, or one of the grottos, pretty much, in front of each of the four areas. So down there in the south, we should have had to play, you know, the Deku, the Sonata of Awakening, or whatever. Over here, we should have had to have played the song that I just played. I guess that's just not how they wanted to go through with it. But that is the second of the four, I believe, in the Nintendo Power, or the player's guide for this game. They call this heart piece the Giant Gossip Stones or something like that. So I'm not sure why they called it that, but that is the heart piece that we are currently going after. Now, I don't know what happened. Ah, man, I forgot to go back and talk to the Goron. I was going to say, what I usually do my pastime here is to go ahead and throw our powder keg at these Dodongos. But I forgot to go back to the Goron Village and get my certification. I just blew up the rock. So I'm gonna have to go back and do that, but that is not really that big of a deal. We're gonna have to just throw bombs at these guys. The, the reason I would waste a powder keg, by the way, is because it doesn't matter. At this point, there are two areas in the game that you're gonna have to use powder kegs, and we're not at the point where we need to do either of those things. We're really close to the first one, but as of right now, we don't really need any powder kegs. So I'm gonna have to go back and do that, and I was gonna use the powder keg to take these guys out. And believe it or not, the powder keg is not that much stronger. I can't believe I took him out at the same exact time. The powder keg is not that much stronger than a regular bomb, it seems like. I would have thought that the powder keg would have taken out the enemies pretty much immediately, but that is not the case, and I wish I could have shown you guys that. But here we're going to be getting another heart piece. So I don't know why I didn't get this before, because, of course, you know, we had bombs before. The reason I didn't want to take them out with my sword is that I believe, and by the way, I learned this also in the player's guide for this game, it takes 12 slashes of your sword to take out a Dodongo with the Kokiri sword, so that would take forever. And since they do have that, you know, fire breath or whatever, I want to stay away from that if possible. Now, one thing I want to show you before we go to the next grotto, which is like in that direction up there, I was going to say, apparently the draw distance is really bad, but there's a rock over there that we're going to have to go to. I want to try a technique called the... I think it's called the Super Slide, do not, you know, quote me on that. I did not get it right the first time, but I did get it sort of right because I did a little hop right there. Let me go ahead and try and get this to work because I really want to show you guys this because it's kind of funny. There we go. Man, I tried that for like, 
I would wager to say like 15 minutes, but this is the super slide. I could not believe that took me so long. The timing for that is a little bit weirder than I thought it was going to be. I thought I was just going to plop a bomb down and get it to work, but I think I actually got the hang of it a little bit there towards the end. Anyway, that glitch right there, of course, just propels you backwards. I always really love that glitch, but of course, just because of the way it looks, there's no reason that should work whatsoever. But there are a lot of variations of that. Like there's a super slide, the extended super slide, the hyper extended super slide, the water extended super slide. And I'm not sure what's going on with these. Maybe I'm just not close enough to them for it to register or whatever. But I wasted a lot of time out there, like going rounding up bombs. Hopefully when I get done with this heart piece, I'll still have enough time to go do the other stuff that I needed to do because that's going to be kind of silly if I wasted so much time trying to do a glitch that doesn't even really matter if I, you know, wasted time and can't do other stuff. Anyway, that is the third of the four giant gossip stones. Like I said, I'm not really sure why the Nintendo Power decided to call it that. But there is a heart piece we could get over there if we had... What do we need? We need the Zora Mask to do that. We do not have that yet, so we cannot get that. But the gist is, is that in pretty much every area over here, in every area of Termini, I should say, there is a grotto that leads to a heart piece, and there is a grotto that leads to a... Giant Gossip Stones. So we're doing the Giant Gossip Stones harp piece right now, and later on we'll be able to get all of the other sort of little individual harp pieces that we'll need to get. Now, every time I've tried this, like when I practice off camera for this episode and stuff, I've needed to take out the Skullchella, or Skulltella, however you want to say it, for me to be able to get this. And I guess he just doesn't want to come down. I need to take him out before I get the Giant Gossip Stone, I'm assuming. Like I said, every time I tried this before... It would not work if the skull teller was there, but apparently I'm just gonna like suicide and get him. I actually didn't think that was gonna work, but since I had the bomb on my head, I guess it does work. Anyway, this is the final of the four giant gossip stones. We should be getting a heart piece here. If it doesn't, I'll be really worried, but I don't think I've ever had something go that wrong before. And there we go. We get a heart piece, and we've collected two so far. I was going to say, I wonder how close we are to getting another heart container. Apparently, we are two away from getting another heart container. But I will meet you guys back in Goron Village, because I need to go get my Powder Keg certification, or the next cycle is going to be not so much fun. It looks like you managed to succeed. Knowing your skills, I feel fine letting you handle Powder Kegs on your own. It was bad of me to put you through such a dangerous test. I want you to take this as my apology. And that apology is yet another bomb. What a way to say sorry, I guess. Anyway, I'm not sure why we need this right now. We can't really use it at this point. We're going to need it in the next cycle, but when we go back in time, we're not going to have it. So it's kind of a moot point at this point. Like, I think I made that exact same phrase at the beginning of this episode. Anyway, we need to go back to sort of Clock Town, but that's not exactly the area that I want to go. We need to go to Romani Ranch. And Romani Ranch, speaking of powder kegs, we need to go to Romani Ranch because that is how you get the next item, so to speak, that you need to get through the game. The only problem is, on days 1 and 2, it is blocked by a huge boulder, pretty much. And the only way to get the boulder gone on days 2 and, or 1 and 2, I should say, I did not mean to talk to this guy, by the way. The only way to get that boulder out of the way on days 1 and 2 is to throw a powder keg in the way. But on day 3... Basically, there's a guy that has been chiseling away at the rock, and on day three, that rock is not there anymore. So the rock is not going to be there right now, but we're going to need a powder keg on the next cycle when I go back in time to get rid of this rock, because we won't be able to get in here on days one and two to get the item that we need to progress with the game, and you can only get it on day one, as far as I remember. Anyway, here we are on Milk Road, the area right before the Romani Ranch, I guess. Before we actually go into the Romani Ranch, I need to go ahead and shoot down Tingle because I want to. And by the way, before I shoot down Tingle, might as well come over here and activate this Owl Statue because we're going to want to teleport here much later on. Actually, probably in the next episode. But anyway, we need to shoot down Tingle. We need to buy the Romani Ranch map. I was going to say, where did he go? Of course, I think I've explained this probably a hundred times, but since we are in Romani Ranch, the Romani Ranch map is not going to cost that much money, and since we've already talked to Tingle a hundred times, not really much point in listening to the dialogue he has to say, because it is the same in pretty much exact in every area, I should say. Anyway, he's going to give us a, his magic words, and we're going to be able to roll right on into Romani Ranch. Now, this guy right here, we're going to see him in the next cycle, chiseling away at the rock, that we're just going to blow up, as he's been working on getting it out of the way for quite a while, so that was probably one of my favorite parts of the game that we'll see in a, you know the next episode, probably. But here we have Romani Ranch. Now, as you can see down there, there is a girl that looks a lot like 
Romani, actually, not Romani, what is her name? Mo I cannot remember the girl's name from the first game, or Ocarina of Time. I love how, you know, I forgot her name already. Anyway, in Romani Ranch, there is a character that we have come to know and love over the two games, and that is Epona is over there. And Epona is the character that we're going to need to get through the game, because as you might remember from Ocarina of Time, Epona is able to jump over, you know, fences and stuff like that, except apparently not the fence that she is in right now. But we're going to need her to get into the third area of the game, but we can't get her right now because we have to learn Epona's song, and they will not teach it to us until we basically we have to save them for them to teach us Epona's song, and we will do that in the next cycle. We can't do that right now because the thing that we need to save them from has already been uh, has already happened pretty much, I guess. Anyway, this area right here, we're gonna need the Bremen mask, which I always really liked this area. This guy, he's been down on his luck recently. Might as well go ahead and see what he has to say, though. I heard it from my gramps. Says the moon's gonna fall. With something that big, it's sure to take this ranch down with it. Ha, oh well. My only regret is that I won't get to see these guys in the prime as roosters. So we need to help Grog by putting on the Bremen mask. And this, guys, is something that I just cannot talk over because it is one of the coolest things in the game. And you will never be able to see this sort of thing again. So I want you guys to enjoy the spectacle that you're about to see. I don't really get it, but just seeing those guys with a crest and all, I don't have regrets about anything anymore. I'm perfectly satisfied. Here, you can have this from me. And for that, we get the bunny hood. I guess that sort of makes a little bit of sense because we helped his chickens out and they are now roosters. But since we helped him out, we get the bunny hood, which is probably one of my favorite masks, if you, if you can even call it that in the game. Because if you put it on, you run... I think it's 1.5 times faster than regular Link, so you can kind of see it if you toggle it on and off that he is a little bit faster now that he is Bunny Link, I guess you could say. But like I said, it's only 1.5 times faster. When I played the game as a, you know, a young lad, it felt a lot faster than 1.5 times faster. I guess I was a little bit more impatient to get to places. But speaking of impatient to getting to places, or being impatient to get to places, we need to go back to Clock Town. Actually, I think I've done everything that I wanted to do before I reset time. But there's one more thing before I reset time that I want to show you, and I can't show you right now, so I'm going to have to wait till the right time to show you. In the meantime, I think I'm going to go ahead and grind some rupees, because there is a rupee, or there's a heart piece, I should say, that you can only get from the bank from basically depositing 5,000 rupees. So I'm going to have to do that. Might as well make a little bit of headway into that. I will meet you guys at the appropriate time in the appropriate place to show you the final thing that I want to show you before I reset time. All right, guys, I grinded up a few rupees, and like I said, there's a thing that I want to show you before I go back in time. And as you can see, we only have five and a half hours before the moon crashes into Clock Town. I actually kind of lied a little bit. There are two things that I want to show you. You might remember at the beginning of the game, we were stuck in our Deku form, and the reason we needed to go get the moons tier was because we needed to get that to trade to that guy to get to that flower so we could get up here and get into that door up there and get the Ocarina of Time back. There is actually a skip that you can do here. It's actually really hard. It's, it's called a gainer. I don't know why it's called that, but you have to do a backflip and then in the middle of your backflip, like one frame into your backflip. There we go. You can grab onto the ledge by Rizzi targeting. So this little skip right here will skip the entirety of getting that moon here. So I just thought I would show you guys that little trick really quick. So I thought it was always really weird that you could just backflip up there. I thought maybe it would have been a better idea if they just sort of put a barrier on the ledge or something like that. They had to guess that people would try to get up there before they were supposed to. So it's kind of weird that they made it 
pretty much everything that you needed to do that trick is right there for you. It's like at the right, grab height and everything. Anyway, you might remember also that we came in here to get a heart piece from the Master Swordsman, the guy that was too, well, basically it was so never scared of anything, he was so brave and everything, he taught us how to use a sword. If we come back here, I always thought this especially was really kind of, I hate to say disturbing because, you know, it is a little bit though. He was supposed to be the guy that, well, I mean, he's not like a major plot character or anything, but he was supposed to be one of the guys, you know, that was brave and everything. We kind of looked up to our sword master. He gave us a heart piece. He teaches you how to use your sword if you've never played the game before. So I was like, like I said, it was a little bit disturbing how a guy like that, even that kind of guy would retreat back into his little cave or whatever and kind of cower with fear. But I'm going to go ahead and deposit my 25 rupees that I got out of that room with the, you know, scared master swordsman or something like that in it. I guess, you know, there's nothing really else that we need to do here. So I'm going to go ahead and play the Song of Time, putting me back at day one.